We're going to have a look here at the Edexcel A2 Physics uh, Unit 4 question from June 2015. And the question 18 that we're going to look at is about particle physics. Question 18. A cyclotron is a particle accelerator which can be used to accelerate protons. The cyclotron consists of two semicircular electrodes called Ds. An alternating potential difference is applied across the gap between the Ds. A uniform magnetic field is applied at right angles to the plane of the Ds. Complete the diagram to show the path of the protons. Well, first of all, the proton source has been drawn in the upper half of the diagram. So uh, we have to assume that the protons are going to spiral clockwise here. So our job is to add the path of the protons as they make their way around here, spiraling out. And you might want to just put a direction on this so we can tell which way they're crossing the Ds. So part two then says state the direction of magnetic field uh, needed in order to produce the path you have sketched. Well this is left hand rule. Okay. So if we imagine a proton heading that way. Then that, because this is a positive thing, remember this is a plus particle, um, that is going to be like a current because a proton would flow from positive to negative. And so its movement direction is going to be like a current. So if we watch what's happening to protons specifically in this upper region, they are all moving to the right like this. Now, the ones that are in the top half will need a force on them. And the force in the top half will have to be downward to help them make this turn. If I'm in this position, I need a downward force to help me make this turn. So, what that basically means is that we also have a force direction. So, if we left hand rule this then with our... Uh, current finger pointing to the right like this and our force finger pointing towards us like this then when I do that I find that the magnetic field is upward. So that means that for the diagram I have drawn it's coming out of the page So part 3 then says, uh, explain how the kinetic energy of the protons is increased as they follow the path you have drawn. So we need to remember what's going on in the positions. So in the top half we have a positive particle being dragged that way. In the bottom half we have a positive particle being dragged that way. So in the top half we are going to need uh, the Ds to be a certain way. So we're going to need the Ds to be plus here, minus here, when the particle is in the top half. And when we're in the bottom half, we're going to need the opposite electric field there. We're going to need the plus to be behind it here and the minus in front of it. So the, we always have a minus negative uh, electrode ahead of the proton and that will then create an electric field so you're gonna get electric field here that points that way in that case an electric field that points this way in the lower case so in this part you have to explain that the proton always needs uh, when it finds itself in the gap, it always needs to find the electrode in front of it um, is a negative one. So what happens then is that the frequency of the AC needs to switch itself uh, while the proton is doing its little loop 
inside the electrode it needs to be switching which polarity the two uh, sides of the D's are set to so that the proton in the upper half keeps finding this situation and the proton in the lower half keeps finding this situation so between the top half and the bottom half there needs to be a switch of polarity so that the proton keeps coming out and finding a negative electrode ahead of it that's really what you need to go into in your description here to get your marks Part 4 then says, show that the magnetic flux density B of the magnetic field is given by B equals 2 pi F M over E, where F is the frequency of the alternating potential difference, M is the mass of the proton, and E is the charge on the proton. So this kind of expression will come from putting uh, the magnetic force on a charge moving particle. Uh, against the fact that it needs to equal mv squared over r not because there are two forces balanced but because uh, mv squared over r is the centripetal force and it's provided by the magnetic force so we basically start by saying that the bqv the magnetic force on the charged particle is providing the centripetal force mv squared over r so they have to have the same value um, Remember what this is. This is this is f equals m a. It's not um, it's not two forces against each other. This is the physical force, and this is the value it has to equal. So a couple of stages here. Um, oh, we need to divide through by q v. First of all, so we divide both sides by q v. And we get that B equals M V squared over uh, R Q V. And you can see then you can do a bit of cancelling with your V's and you end up with M uh, V over Q R. And I want to recognize V over R here because that's the same as uh, omega because V equals R omega and omega can be written as 2 pi F so basically this is where we get what we're after so our next line says that B is M omega over Q now Q has a value of E and omega has a value of 2 pi F so we just substitute those in now so if we combine the fact that Q is E and omega is 2 pi F then this equation becomes b equals 2 pi f m over e, which is what they've asked us for. Okay. Question 5 then, in a particular cyclotron, B has a value of 1.2 millitesla. Calculate the frequency F of alternating potential difference. Okay, so um, we can rearrange this equation now for F and put in B and the other details. So we recognize then that F would equal... B E over 2 pi M and we just fill that in so on the top line we get the magnetic field value 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 teslas times the charge on a proton and we need to divide by 2 pi times the mass of a proton so we've got 2 times pi times 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms and we need to feed that through our calculator to get a frequency okay and you can see here that I'm getting about 18.3 kilohertz for that okay part B then the diagram shows the tracks produced in a bubble chamber and explains that at X, an incoming charged particle interacts with the stationary proton 
It says describe and explain what can be deduced about the interaction at X and subsequent events. You may add to the diagram to help your answer. So we have a particle coming here and some interaction occurs which results in a particle going off this way. Now here we get oppositely curving particles so that would indicate a two opposite charged being produced here and that would make sense if there was a neutral particle making them because whatever happens here has to conserve charge so if there's a plus and a minus um, in, in these two positions there had to be a neutral particle here so what this is suggesting very very strongly is that a neutral particle crossed here So firstly, this interaction has to conserve charge. So if a neutral particle was sent across here, that means that whatever came in and whatever left had to have the same charge. So this exiting particle, you need to explain, has the same charge as this entering particle. And that a neutral particle goes from X to Y, and then it itself decays here, and we have neutral going to plus and minus. These two, these two are opposite charges here. So we need to explain that charge is conserved in this interaction where opposite curvatures indicate opposite charges. So a neutral particle is decaying into equal amounts of plus and minus. So charge is, decay is conserved in this zone. So charge is conserved in this zone. So the incoming and outgoing particle have the same charge here because they sent a neutral particle over here and charge has to be conserved in this. Then this neutral particle decays to plus and minus, so again, charge is conserved there. So that's really what you're explaining. The, the only thing that would explain what has happened here, the appearance of this, is if a neutral particle had shot across there and decayed into those things. And because they are turning, turning in opposite directions, we can tell that one of these is plus and one of them is minus. Okay, so the interaction here caused one particle to turn to another plus a neutral and so this and this have to have the same charge. This is neutral, and neutral has to go to plus and minus. So you're explaining all those interactions to get your marks. You might need to spend a bit of time explaining that we can't see a neutral particle because neutral particles uh, don't ionize, and that's why there's no track belonging to the neutral particle shooting across here. So you might need to explain the nature of the detector in a bubble chamber, that it can't detect an uncharged particle because the uncharged particle is not capable of ionizing and therefore creating a stream of bubbles, whereas this is a charged particle. So is this. And these are oppositely charged, so they're all capable of creating tracks. And these curvatures, based on the magnetic field, will make uh, opposite charges turn in opposite directions. Okay, that's that. Thanks for watching.